Get your authorized version of the King James Scriptures, the true scriptures. Uh, I love you, uh, Brother Alexander. And turn in your authorized version of the, the King James Scriptures, the true scriptures, to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We will be reading verses 23 on the verse 30 in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Go there in the authorized version, the King James Scriptures, the true, real Scriptures. Beginning in verse 23 on the verse 30. And on your own time, read the context. Actually, read the whole chapter. Uh, this has got to be kind of quick because i um, got lots of stuff to do. But we begin. Verses 23 on the verse 30. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labor is more abundant. In stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths off. Of the Jews five times received I five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. And he's not referring to buildings, he re he's referring to Bodies of believers, Church of the Living God. <clears throat> Who is weak? And I am not weak. Hello, hi. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Now, Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Verses 8 on to verse 10. Again, read the context on your own time. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 on to verse 10. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. He's talking about the thorn in his flesh. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect, perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. <laughs> therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Then am I strong. Pick apart. Hmm. Take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities. <laughs> you know, those who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I just paraphrased that and butchered that, but pardon. But the life of the body of Christ, Church of the Living God, is not an easy one. It truly is not. We will suffer many things. We will go through many things. And also, we as the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God, are to, 
to be dependent on the Lord. Now, we are to do our part. We are to work with our hands, yes. But unless it is of the Lord, we labor in vain. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28, Besides, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, the body, your brothers, your sisters. Turn now in your authorized version, the King James Scriptures, the real Scriptures, the only Scriptures. Um, in conversation last night, in speaking on to a beloved brother, an elder, um, we brought up the conversation about how our speech should closely resemble the King James Scriptures, the real Scriptures, the true Scriptures. And... Um, I agree. I agree. And as the beloved uh, Matthew Melanson also brought up, you know, uh, who um, out of love rebuked me for um, saying something that was not uh, in language in accordance with the scripture. The example was, um, I said in the one video, um, should the Church of the Living God wear a mask? I refer to um, a child as an aborted fetus. And uh, my brother, Matthew Melanson, rebuked me out of love. Beautiful. And it's like, I, you know, you can see the comment on the video if you are so inclined. He's like, uh, hey, Brad, it's not a fetus. It's, it's a child. And amen. And to you, brother Matthew Melanson, bless your heart and soul for that rebuke. But, Go to 1 John chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 13 on to verse 15. Now, pay attention in these verses how many times the word no appears, okay? John, 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Believe on the name of the Son of God. Believing in something is making a mental agreement, if you will, onto fact. While believing on someone, the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father, um, you're trusting on him. Comprende? Let's continue. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that... If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. See, you and I, brother, sister, of the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, we know something. We know that we have eternal life. And we also know that, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, 
He heareth us according to his will. Thy will be done. You know, brethren, um, sometimes when you pray, you pray for things that you think you need when our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, knows exactly what you need. But see, he wants you to come to him in prayer for the relationship between you, me, and our Father in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. And what is his will? Well, you need to search the scriptures, okay? You need to search this uh, book here, to search the scriptures, and find out what his will is. Because, brethren, I can tell you from experience that you can put a lot of time, a lot of effort, even fasting, uh, and, and being in prayer for something that is not in his will or of his will and the Lord will show that to you if you're willing to hear it you know what I'm saying and on that go to Romans chapter 8 okay Romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8, verses 26, on to verse 28, of course. Romans 8, verses 26, on to verse 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Very quickly, uh, a majority of the new Roman Catholic Bible perversions take out itself and put himself. And a lot of people will draw attention to that the King James Scriptures calls the Spirit an it. Um... That's kind of a very petty argument against the King James Scriptures, the true, real Scriptures, okay? It really is, because when these new Roman Catholic modern Bible perversions take out itself and put in himself, that is giving credence onto the three person trinity and uh, this this book King James Scriptures the authorized version King James Scriptures the true scriptures um, is an anti-papist book and the teaching of the trinity is first Babylonian, Egyptian, and of course, Roman Catholic. So see, when yourself make the defense, well, it says, <laughs> it says, <laughs> but the spirit itself, that's an insult. No, no, no. See, there's only one God. Okay, there's only one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, okay? The fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Word made flesh. The three parts, I, I don't like saying that, but the three members of the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body okay and here in the King James scriptures the true real scriptures um, it does not teach you that God is three persons 
And a person is a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? It does not teach you that. That's Catholic. That's Egyptian. That's Babylonian. I had to throw that in there. Let's continue. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And of course, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Brethren, we don't know what we should pray for as we are. We see things that we think we ought to be praying for. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession. Because you and I, brother, sister, we don't know how to pray for or what to pray for as we ought. And when the Lord reveals unto you what you ought to be praying for, do so. Do so. It's very important. Philippians chapter 4 now. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Brethren, are you thankful that you can have um, communication with the living God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, through the Spirit? Is, is prayer to you a burden or a dreariness or is it a luxury? Is it a joy to get down there on your knees and talk with your Father who is in heaven? Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hmm. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. How, could, uh, how can you in this situation have peace? And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 4. Verses 2. On to verse 6. Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 on to verse 6. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. You know, we are to be thankful in all things, good or bad. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. And right here, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt that ye may know 
how ye ought to answer every man. Seasoned with salt. Salt burns, but also preserves. And on that one, go to Jude, the book of Jude. Verses 21 on the verse 25 to close out the book of Jude, not the chapter. Actually, let's read verses 20 on the verse 25. Did I say that? <laughs> In Jude. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, seasoned with salt, that your speech may be always with grace, seasoned with salt. And others save with fear pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. You know, uh, brethren, sisters, you know, this hands off, love them into the kingdom, ugh, craziness. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather scare the hell out of you than to speak unto you smooth things, prophesy deceits. And on that, of course, Job 28, verse 28. <laughs> Come on, work with me, fingers, work with me. <clears throat> Job 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord... Is with, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. To depart from evil. First Peter. First Peter. Chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verses 10 on to verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 12. For he that will love life and see good days... Let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Watch your mouth. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And of course, 1 Peter chapter 4. <clears throat> verse 7. On to verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 7. On to verse 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore 
sober. And watch on to prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Oh, it's, I'm supposed to, according to the scriptures, uh, do this. And you are. But God loveth a cheerful giver. Because remember, God ain't pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do anything, and neither is Lucifer, Satan, the devil, pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do anything. Okay? you got to remember that. We have free will, Calvinist. Let's continue. Verse 10. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And let's go back now to 1 John chapter 5. Verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions of that we desired of him. You know, brethren, yesterday, yesterday I found out a few things about our brethren in Christ. Um, things that I was unaware of. That, was, that, that, that made me sad. For there is a beloved brother who has two children, a son and a daughter. And I come to find out yesterday that his daughter was just absolutely horrendously sick. But praise the Lord, um, she, has, um, she has recovered or is in re recovery. And this brother let me know that and I'm like, I, I had no idea. I had no idea. And I felt so guilty. It's like, Lord, I, I, I didn't know. And I pray for this brother every day. And also uh, a brother from um, Croatia um, had me to know that he's going through some horrendous struggles at home. Um, his name is uh, being cast out as, uh, as evil for the Son of Man's sake. And, and praise the Lord that he, he, he let me know because it's like, I, I had no idea, you know, because we don't know how to pray as we ought. And of course, yesterday, uh, my beloved brother and friend let me know that um, it was a, a two-sided coin on that. Uh, a dear, beloved brother of mine, of course, Alexander Hartley, uh, let me know that um, he, he's going to be moving as well. And the Lord shut something down um, because um, my brother had been praying your, for his will, for your will, Lord. If it is your will, if this happen, make it happen. If it isn't, then stop it. And that's what the Lord did, so praise the Lord. But yet at the same time, my brother let me know this. I was like, oh no, I'm so, oh brother. Oh brother, very very similar in situation to myself in that he needs to get out of where he's at right now. Granted, he has a little bit more time, but he has to get out of there. And as we have to get out of here soon, within the next couple of days, 
and we still got, oh, oh boy. But that, that really troubled me. That really, really troubled me that, you know, that to find out that my brethren were hurting and going through these things. And we, and of course, we know that, that the body of Christ is going to be going, is going through things, especially now, this close to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, the resurrection. And things are just getting worse and worse and worse every day. You know, and very quickly, um, go to James, James chapter 5, James chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 16. Now you got to remember, the book of James is written on to the Jew is written for the Jewish people in the time of Jacob's trouble, but there are doctrines within the book of James that cross dispensational lines that are applicable to us today in the time of the Gentiles. This dispensation, okay, there are, okay, there are, but this is primarily for the uh, time of Jacob's trouble. But let's read uh, James chapter five verses fourteen on to verse sixteen. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now the Catholics take this way out of proportion, of course. Of course. And so do charismatics, who are Catholic. Confess your faults, not trespasses, not sins, your faults one to another. It was my, uh, for example, in talking to a brother, um, it was a late, very late evening and I was tired and, <laughs> and I've done this twice to this brother. I fell asleep on him. While talking to him on the phone, Talk, very rude, very rude, and uh, praise our Lord and Father Jesus Christ. Um, he's like, yeah, it's yeah, don't worry about it, Brad. It's all good. It's like, Lord, I, you know, Lord, I, I fell asleep on this brother twice, you know. But it's like I said to my brother, Lord, I, I you know, brother, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I that's my fault, you know. You confess your faults not your sins, to one another. You confess your sins to the Lord. Okay, Catholics will use, especially verse 16, to justify going to their Jesuit priests. And when you research the uh, thing of confession, uh, that's how the Jesuits got a lot of information, and still do to this day, on how to use that stuff against kings and stuff like that. But let's continue. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth, availeth much. Let's continue reading this to the end of the chapter. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Brethren, we need to pray for one another. And, you know, when I tell people that we are praying for them, we are praying for them. You know, we have so many brethren and sisters that we pray for. So many. 
And recently, it's been, Lord, your will be done. And I, and I especially have been praying, Lord, I pr may your will be done in the life of uh, Brother Alexander, uh, Brother uh, Matthew Melanson, Matthew Green, Matthew Landau, uh, you know, and so on and so forth, you know. Your will be done. Your will be done. And, you know, brethren, our prayers are far more weighty, far more powerful than anything. And like I said, it, um, it really bothered me that there were these things going on and I had no clue. But I do now, see? <laughs> I do now. Not like, not that people should be coming to me with all these prayer requests. Uh, you pray to the Lord, but you know, it does help. And we are, we are told to pray for one another. We are told to pray for one another. So brethren, the whole point of this video is pray for one another. Pray for one another. Do you pray for others? Or do you become too self-centered and focus most of your prayer on yourself with only little glib morsels of prayer for the brethren, for the sisters. What do you pray for? Who do you pray for? Do you pray for what you think is best for them? Or do you seek the Lord and His will for whomever it is that you are praying for? And the Lord will reveal unto you how you ought to pray for the brethren. So, I just wanted to make this very quick video about praying um, in the will of the Lord. Because like I said, brethren, you can pray for something fervently feverishly, but yet it will be outside of the Lord's will. And how do you know His will? Search the Scriptures daily to see if these things be so. The authorized version, the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures. Anyway, I do have to go. It is 8.35 here, my time. Um, we're Five days out, or what is it? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, five days out from moving. And still got a lot of stuff we got to do. We got a dumpster coming today uh, that will help with all the stuff that we got to throw out. And um, please, brethren, keep us in your prayers. Um, and I'll con I, I will confide in you. Um, my wife is truly struggling with um, departing with a lot of her stuff. So, and I am struggling too on how to comfort her. So, anyway, brethren, I love you. We are praying for many of you. And, um, thank you. And we will see you in the next video whenever or whatever that shall be.